Sports, right back to catch you again. <laughs> uh, episode number two. Um, yeah, so before we start, I want to congratulate Mid Valley, Tunkhannock, Wyoming area. Congratulations on getting to the state championship game, becoming runner ups. That's a great accomplishment. Uh, you know, you guys are all young, so I expect to see you guys back there uh, next year. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I know a lot of you guys are playing travel ball. I can see it all over the uh, all over the internet, and you guys sending me videos and stuff. Hey, use that as motivation. Use that to get uh, better for next season. Uh, get stronger. Get faster. Get some more heat on your throws. Mayor, uh, Runkle was throwing, uh, I believe, 60, 65 this year. So watch her come back for like 70 or something like that. And, it's it's it, it's just crazy, you know the the talent that we have in this area. Like we had six teams in the runnings at one time to get there, so it's crazy the talent that we have this year in softball and baseball is ridiculous. And then you can't forget about those Hazleton guys that went undefeated for a while, and those Riverside guys that that went undefeated, won the district championship, and just just fell one game short. You know, you can't you can't forget about. West Strain, who had an amazing year. Like, those girls were on fire over there. Those girls were on fire. Uh, you can't forget about them. You, uh, you can't forget about Dunmore, who, who, who is very, very, very close to almost pulling it off against Mid Valley. And they could have been almost in the same position. So, I mean, there's some good, good, good teams in this area. So, you guys got to, uh, you guys, baseball and softball has never been more exciting than it has been this year. And we are really looking forward to next year. It's looking good. Uh, so, now we get into hot street topics, you know. This, t this, this uh, topic is about being a parent, being a parent of an AAU player, being a parent and just seeing things. And I'm going to go on a little bit about some, some uh, situation that I had with AAU basketball this year. But... As being a parent of AAU, like you, you just, uh, you know, you, you've, uh, for years, you've, you've really strived to make your kid, you know, work hard or, or just try to try to help them get to that next level, and 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 because you know they like to play, so you want to give them what you can to help them get to where they gotta go, you know. So one year, my. Uh, one year you might try out for an AAU team and you might miss it. You know, then you go somewhere else, you work harder, you come back, you get stronger, faster, and then the next thing you know, you make that team. It's like a great accomplishment. Like, you know, you worked hard, you worked your tail off, you got there, you made the team. You know, uh, being a parent, it's like you just wanna you just wanna help your kid out any way you can and, and go into the games. You wanna see them get on the court and play. You know, and and get to and and get to show you like like mom. This is what Brad Cooper taught me. Mom, this is what Phil Odom taught me. Mom, this is what Al Calais taught me. Mom, this is what Kevin Clark taught me. Mom, this is like you know what I mean. This is like this is like AU is like so excited because now you actually get to see, you know, what they do. Like in rec ball, rec ball is okay, but. They don't really get to do what they got to do because you got limits. You got to stay inside a three-point line or stay on, you know what I mean, stay around the box or, or like, like you can't fast break sometimes. So it's kind of crazy uh, sometimes with the community center ball and the, and the, the rec league ball is kind of crazy. It, it, it's just you don't really get to see what they do. When we, now, when we had the 570 Sports Basketball League over there at the Music Youth Center, them kids right there when we were just letting them go at it we we're putting teams together to make have the best players be on the best teams uh olp came over with the, with the freak a killer a killer squad and then you had northeast chaos who came through with the killer squad too they went they went undefeated the first season and then they came back the next season and i think they lost the game before the championship but then nonetheless they was they were still there and they had a great team uh but you just want to see that, and then and then to have it like kind of like taken away from you because of bad coaching. Now I'm getting into the bad coaching part. I'm getting into the part where I want to tell y'all our my experience this last AAU season. So my like my so my daughter was going uh, playing AAU the 
the one of the ladies on the team that runs the team, she was actually like recruiting her, like, hey, yo, bring her down here, bring her down here. And I'm like, okay, cool. We're gonna bring her down there. Uh, after we iron out some stuff. So, cause I had some stuff to iron out before the whole situation, you know, but that's a, that's another story for another day. Uh, but I got that all ironed out. And, uh, you know, you just want to see them play. There was a, there was a, uh, quite a few kids on the team, 12, maybe 11 or 12, which is tough, which is tough as a coach. So you're put in a tough spot. You got to You got to make sure all these kids play. And and at the same time, you got to try to compete. So, uh, so I can understand a, a point a little bit. But when you get the team, when you get the team put together, and you got eleven kids, you got to know that these girls all have to play. They have to be. A, they have to play. So whether it's you're with your strong five or you're mixing in, you're blending, you're doing whatever, you have to do that because. AAU basketball is not cheap. People did not just pay for AAU basketball just to just to watch their kids sit on the bench. People did not pay AAU play play for AAU basketball to do that. They pay to see their kids play. You know, you pay, play. It's only common sense. Pay, play. It's not rec ball where you, you know what I mean. It's not. It's like you're paying a good amount of money to watch your kid out there playing basketball with other kids. So. When you take that away from people, that's just ridiculous, and that's not good coaching. That's bad coaching. Like that's bad all in general. I mean, I'm, you're trying to win. You win games by 30, 40, and there's kids that are still sitting on the bench that don't play. That's bad coaching. Like it, there's no way, because I mean, yeah, yeah, you're winning the games fine, but you're killing other kids. So you're winning and a game, but you're killing the kids. You're making them not want to play. I don't know how many people, different people on that team was like highly upset about it. Like, okay, they're not like me. They're not open. They're not going to go to people. They're not going to say something about it. They're not going to call down there. They're not going to do what I do because people are so scared of the AAU community. People are scared of, oh, uh, what happens if this, oh, they'll take this, they'll do this to you. They'll do that to you. You don't want to mess with those people. They're scary. Like, no, ain't nobody the big bad wolf. Ain't nobody the big bad wolf. Look, I'm, if I have a problem, I'm going to go at it and I'm going to go talk about it. And I'm going to say something until it gets fixed because it's not right. You got, I mean, I'm not even only, only talking about my kid because it was six other kids on the team that didn't get no game time. Like, none. These girls, a lot of the girls I trained, a lot of the girls I worked with, a lot of the girls I practiced, I did everything with, or had them on my team. And as a coach, they all deserve some type of minutes. Like, some stronger than the others, okay, good. But guess what? Then you sprinkle in the strong with the little, with the, with the little bit of talent, and then you try to make it work. Winning ain't that important to kill kids, kill kids, uh, uh kill a kid, because that's what you were doing. I've seen multiple kids going home from these games crying, like, why am I not playing? You know, why are these, like, this is not right. But people won't speak up about it because they're scared of the AAU community and how they might bite at you like sharks or or stab your kid in the back or you know do something wrong to a kid or something like that. If you're that type of person, yo, listen, you like you're just as wrong as the whole thing. You're just as wrong. Just speak up. Like that's what we're here for. We we supposed to speak up. When you pay, the customer is always right. So no matter what, no matter what uh what your situation is, when you pay. You're always right. You're always right. They, they, like that's a situation that gotta that that just can't happen. So you know that that happened. It was just like it was just like that was just like a a big thing. Like so like maybe like uh, probably almost the whole AAU season. That that's what they did. That's what these coaches did. Six co six kids most nights did not even see the floor. And I'm not talking about like. Maybe they got two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Like they were like some girls didn't even play some nights. Some some kids got in there for two minutes. Some kids got in there for three minutes. That's bad coaching because your kids are on the team, so that already takes up two spots. Guess what? Sub your kids. Sub everybody's kids. That ain't right. I don't think that's right. Um, I don't think that's right at all. Like you winning games by forty, 
50, 60, you winning games big time, and and you can't even put the rest of the kids in, you just keep your kids in? That's not right. That's terrible coaching. And and I and I I, I uh I'm a, I'm gonna actually put the name out because because this, I don't care. Like I'm the type of person that doesn't care. Like if you do wrong, I'm going to let it be known. I'm going to tell people it is wrong. Jamie Fenton and and I mean Jamie. Oh, I'm sorry, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie Denenbaum and Mike Fenton. Those were the two coaches. They, they, that's that's what they did. That and they thought that was good for these kids. They thought it was good. Now, mind you, I will say this, and I will say it straight up, and I mean it with the most sincerity. Some of the girls that did not play actually were better than some of the girls that just played all the minutes. And I mean that. And that's the truth. And and if you if 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 uh you have any doubts or if anybody has any doubts, just the fact that I'm saying that it's maybe better or close, that means they should at least be on the floor. That means they should at least play because they're capable of playing. They're not kids that are dropping balls. They're not kids that are like terrible basketball players like this is blatantly wrong like it just doesn't make any sense so uh so basically what i'm saying is is you know the aau life can be a rough life like you can think like your kids better or you can know your kids better or other people can tell you your kids better and it just doesn't matter it matters like parents can't coach like they should not coach aau they should not coach AAU basketball. They should not, maybe baseball, because baseball is a little different. You know, you get a certain amount of kids on the floor, you know, but a, a lot more than five, you know. But, uh, but, uh, I just, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around how people actually thought this was okay. So, you know, and then, and then like, uh, like I said, I'm not the type of person that's going to bite my tongue. I'm going to bite my tongue maybe for like a little bit. And then I'm like a shark. <laughs> so I had to shark that situation down. And then guess what? And when I shark the situation down, it was all bad. It was like, oh, he's a bad guy. He's a bad coach. Uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's this, that, and the fourth. Like, er, like he was only doing things for his kids. He's only thinking about his kid. Da, da, da. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. I never just thought about my kid. I thought about everybody's kid. And then, like, when the situation got to, to just be fed up, like, I was like, yo, let's hit the, like, why don't, why don't, like, my wife was like, it's time to hit the ejection button. Like, this is blatant. This is on purpose. This is, like, disrespectful. So, I mean, not, not did you only disrespect me, but you disrespected other people, too. You disrespect other people's families, you know. You disrespect other people. Like some kids, some kids might not even come back because of that. I can, I can guarantee you. I mean, if I'm a kid, I'm thinking, um, yo, can I go over here somewhere else? Can I go somewhere else? Can I go somewhere else? Like, that just should not happen. Um, I don't even know, man. This is a touchy subject to me because I'm like actually like, kind of emotional about it because I'm here helping, like. As much as I can, trying to do as much as I can everywhere. I'm trying, I'm spreading myself thin. And I'm doing what I gotta do, and at the same time, it's like when stuff like this happens, it's like wow, these people do not belong coaching at all. They should not coach. They're disrespectful, ignorant, and just don't care about don't care about kids. So why should they coach? If it ain't their kid, they don't care about the kid. Believe me, there. 570 Sports. This has been an exclusive one of AAU Basketball Life. Those. <laughs>